Let us now see an example in which we have been given two adjacent sides of a quadrilateral and also given the measures of three angles of that quadrilateral. So here, instead of the dimensions of the sides or the diagonals, we have been given dimensions of only two adjacent sides and measure of three angles. So let's try to solve this question. Well, in this specific problem, we have to draw a quadrilateral PLAN, that is the vertices of this quadrilateral are PLA and N. And the information available to us is PL is equal to 4 centimeters. And so let us start with this line segment PL. And so I fix my point P somewhere here. So let this be point P and we know that PL measures 4 centimeters. So I can draw a line segment PL measuring 4 centimeters and the point L will be somewhere over here. So we have now located the points P and L and the distance of between the points P and L is 4 centimeters. So we have done that. Next we have been given that LA is equal to 6.5 centimeters. So we can draw an arc of radius 6.5 centimeters from point L as the center. So let's do that. And now we have to measure a radius of 6.5 centimeters. So I take this compass and I take this ruler and I measure a distance of 6.5 centimeters. And after having measured this as 6.5 centimeters, I will place this tip at point L. And after placing this tip at point L, I will draw an arc that measures 6.5 centimeters in radius. So this is the arc measuring 6.5 centimeters. And having drawn this arc, we can safely say that the point A lies somewhere on this arc. This is because every point on this arc is at a distance of 6.5 centimeters from L. And because A is at a distance of 6.5 centimeters from L, we can say that A lies somewhere on this arc. Well, with that knowledge, we can now check these two pieces of information as used and proceed to the next information that we have. We have the measure of angle P as 90 degrees. And so we will have to draw a side that is perpendicular to PL. That is, we'll have to draw a side that measures right angle with this segment PL. So I take my protractor, I place it carefully at this point P, and then I measure an angle of 90 degrees vertically. Having found this point, I will now draw this ray which is perpendicular to this segment PL. And now having drawn this line that is at 90 degrees with the side PL of the quadrilateral as given, I will now mark this information as used. And I can now say that the point N lies somewhere here. And so we have the point N lying somewhere on this straight line. Well, let us now come to the next piece of information. We have been given that measure of angle A is 110 degrees. So now we need an angle that measures 110 degrees. So what do we do? Well, we do not have the position of point A. We don't have the exact position of point A. We only know that it lies somewhere on this arc. So for now, we will not use this piece of information. We will move to the next bit given to us. We have angle N equals 85 degrees. And now we do not have the exact location of point N. And so this information cannot be directly used. So what do we do? So now, how do we proceed when we cannot use these two bits of information directly? Well, to proceed when we cannot directly use these two bits of information, we will look at a very useful property of any quadrilateral. And the property is, in any general quadrilateral, the sum of measures of all the angles is always 360 degrees. So in this quadrilateral, we have measure of angle P plus measure of angle L plus measure of angle A plus angle N equals 360 degrees. And why is this true? Well, because in any quadrilateral, the sum of measures of all the angles is always 360 degrees. So we can now say that this is applicable to our triangle as well. And let us now substitute the values that we know. We know P is 90 degrees, so we'll put 90 degrees here. We will put L as unknown, so angle L I will just replace by X because it's unknown to us. A measures 110 degrees, so I will write it here. And finally, N measures 85 degrees, and so I will include it here as well. And this is equal to 360 degrees from property of a quadrilateral. Now from this equation, I can always find the value of X. And the value of X that I obtain is 360 minus 90 plus 110 plus 85. So let's do that. X is equal to 360 degrees minus the sum of 90, 110, 
and 85. So now we can solve this bracket and we get the answer x is equal to 75 degrees. So if you solve this expression here, we get x is equal to 75 degrees. And so we get the measure of angle L is 75 degrees. And now the question should be easy to solve. What I now do is, I know the measure of angle L as 75 degrees. So I will take my protractor, place it carefully at point L, and then draw an angle measuring 75 degrees. So 75 degrees is somewhere here. So I locate this point L where this segment that I'm drawing is at an angle of 75 degrees to the base PL. So I will measure this angle as 75 degrees and label it here. Now having drawn this side at an angle of 75 degrees to PL, we can now say that the point A lies somewhere on this line which is at 75 degrees to PL. But I also know that the point A is also lying on this arc. So because the point A lies on this line and this arc, it will lie at the point of intersection of this line and this arc. So I have now successfully located the point A as well. Well, so I now have the three vertices of this quadrilateral and the only vertex that now remains to be found is the vertex N. So let's look at the bits of information given to us. And now I know that angle A measures 110 degrees. So it is time to use this bit of information. And now that I know the position of point A, I can easily draw a side that is an, at an angle 110 degrees with LA. And now that I have located the point A, I can now take the protractor and measure an angle of 110 degrees from point A. And now to find the fourth and the final vertex N, I will use this bit of information given to us. And so because angle A measures 110 degrees, I can take this protractor and keep it carefully at this point A. Next, I locate the angle or rather I locate the point that is at an angle of 110 degrees to this side AN. And then I can join these two points. Having drawn this side, which makes an angle of 110 degrees at point A, I can now say that the point N lies on this line somewhere. So we now have point N lying on this line as well as this line vertical. So we now have the point N lying on this vertical line as well as this horizontal ray. So clearly, the point of intersection of these two lines should be the exact position of point N. And so we have now obtained the exact position of point N and our quadrilateral is now complete. We only have to label the various sides and angles that were given to us in the question. So let's do that. Well, PL we've already labeled to be 4 centimeters. Next we come to LA that measures 6.5. So I will measure this side LA or rather I will label this side LA as measuring 6.5 centimeters. Next I come to this angle P which I've already labeled as 90 degrees. And angle A, which was given to us, is 110 degrees, which is also labeled. And finally, angle N is 85 degrees. And so if you measure this angle N, we will find it measures 85 degrees. And so we label it as well. So we've now obtained the quadrilateral when we were given two adjacent sides and three angles of the quadrilateral. Well, with this, we come to the end of the solution to this question. Well. Let us now see an example where we are asked to construct a quadrilateral when we have been given the three sides and two included angles. Now what do we mean by included angles? Well, in this case, if we have this quadrilateral, then we have, suppose we have these three sides given to us, and so the two included angles would be, this would be one included angle, and this would be the other included angle. So the angles included by the three sides that are given to us are known as the included angles. So let us see one example based on this. Now we have to draw a quadrilateral whose vertices are T, R, U and E respectively. And we have T, R measuring 3.5 centimeters. Likewise, we have R, U measuring 3 centimeters and so on. Note that here we have the lengths of three sides and we also have the measures of two included angles. So let's get started with the first piece of information that we have. We know that TR measures 3.5 centimeters and so I can take my scale and draw a line segment measuring 3.5 centimeters. So let us first fix the point T, say it lies somewhere here, then I need a point R which is 3.5 centimeters away from T. And now I know that segment TR has length of 3.5 centimeters. So if I fix my point T somewhere here, I can very easily draw the segment TR. 
So I draw the segment TR measuring 3.5 centimeters, which comes somewhere here. So I will now label this as point R, and this side has the length 3.5 centimeters, which is labeled here. So now we've used TR equals 3.5 centimeters. Let us now come to the next bit of information that is RU equal to 3 centimeters. Now I know that the point R is somewhere here, and so the point U will lie at a distance of 3 centimeters away from point R. And now I know that the point U is 3 centimeters away from point R. So if I take my compass and measure a radius of 3 centimeters, I can take R as the center and I can draw an arc of radius 3 centimeters. So I have now taken the point R as center and I have drawn an arc of radius 3 centimeters. And I know that my point U will lie somewhere on this arc. So I will label this as U in the bracket. So I have again used this information as well. The last piece of information that is given to us in terms of length is UE equaling 4 centimeters. Now we do not know where U is and we do not know where E is. So we cannot do anything with this bit of information right now. So we move to the measure of angle R which is given as 75 degrees. Now we know that angle R here measures 75 degrees and so we draw a ray which makes an angle of 75 degrees with this side TR. So I will need my protractor. And so I keep my protractor at this point R and take a measure of 75 degrees accurately. Having drawn this ray, I can now say that this ray makes an angle of 75 degrees with this side TR. So I will label this as 75 degrees. And now, I know that the point U lies somewhere on this ray starting from point R. So I can now say that U lies somewhere on this line as well as on this arc. And hence, because U lies both on this line and this arc, this point of intersection will be the exact position of point U. And so this is the vertex U of the quadrilateral TRUE. So we've now located three vertices of this quadrilateral and we've used this piece of information as well. So let us come to the final piece of information that is U equals 120 degrees. And now I will take the protractor and keep it carefully at point U. And then I will draw the obtuse angle 120 degrees. Now 120 is greater than 90 and so this angle that this ray makes with this vertical line as 120 degrees. And so I will draw this ray starting from point U and which makes an angle of 120 degrees with this side UR and I will measure this angle as 120 degrees. Well, I now know that my vertex E lies somewhere on this ray. So I now know that this ray contains the vertex E. And now I have used this information where angle U measures 120 degrees. So now we will go to the only piece of information that we haven't used yet, and that is UE is equal to 4 centimeters. So let us locate the point U. Well, we know the location of point U, and we also know that the point E lies somewhere on this ray. Plus, we now know that measure of segment UE is 4 centimeters. So I will take a distance of 4 centimeters on this ray UE, and that will give us the exact position of the point E. So again, I use my compass along with the scale, and then I put the compass at this point 0 and take a radius of 4 centimeters. Having taken this radius 4 centimeters, I will now place the tip at point U and draw an arc. Now clearly the radius of this arc is 4 centimeters. So now I know that the point E lies somewhere on this arc as well as somewhere on this ray. So the point of intersection of this arc and this ray will be the exact position of point E. So now we are ready with all the four vertices of this quadrilateral and the only thing that now remains is to join these vertices. And now I will join these vertices E and T which will give us the completed quadrilateral T U R E. So we join these points E and T, and so our quadrilateral TRUE is now complete. Well, let us see if we have missed some data here. Let us now see whether we have labeled all the dimensions given to us in the question correctly or not. So we have labeled TR as 3.5 centimeters, and RU is 3 centimeters. So this has to be labeled as 3 centimeters, this distance RU. Next, we have UE equal to 4 centimeters. So this length UE is 4 centimeters. Next we have measure of angle R as 75 degrees which we've already included 
and measure of angle U as 120 degrees, which we've already labeled. So now we've used all these pieces of information, correctly labeled a quadrilateral, and our quadrilateral is now ready. Well, with this we come to the end of the solution to this question.